The literal president of the United States has been kicked off Twitter. Welcome to the club. Various other social media platforms are purging conservatives. And unfortunately for our country, basically everything that we've predicted in the last few months is happening right now before us. But, you know, on the bright side, that's somewhat good for me because it vindicates my political instincts. But anyways, we're going to go over everything that we need to know and be thinking about during all of this. The truth about free speech, privatized and state power, the implications of what happened at the Capitol last week, all that good stuff, along with some very important announcements about this channel and its plans for the future. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. The long-awaited, much-anticipated anti-pornography dissertation will be coming out next week, finally. This has all been one big metaphor for the importance of delaying gratification. Those with high IQs, of course, understand. So the plan for this week is to have two videos covering broadly what's going on right now in our country in terms of censorship and leftist hypocrisy, which are going to be today and Thursday, respectively. And then also this Thursday, for my Arizona people, on the 21st, I'm going to be speaking at the University of Arizona at 6 p.m., giving a very important, very epic, and very high IQ speech. I'll put a link with more information in the description of this video. So we're very excited for that. And then we'll have the second video also released that evening. And then we'll put out the anti-porn dissertation early next week. And then we'll be going Texas mode. We'll probably have to take some time off to get the new studio ready, get settled in, all that good stuff. And then we can really start to get to work on everything that we have planned for this year. So we're very excited about that. But in the meantime, we're probably going to be putting a lot more content on the website, uh, some live streams, some miscellaneous videos, etc. And that's important because we never know if YouTube is going to decide that I'm not allowed to talk to you guys anymore. So when you sign up on the website, like, yeah, you know, you get a bunch of cool stuff, you get benefits, whatever. But really, the most important thing is that it ensures that we'll never lose contact with each other because that would be a bummer, right? And on that note, as you may have heard, our Discord server got nuked for literally no reason, but thankfully we've got something else set up now. It's basically a Discord alternative with some different features, um, but it's still focused primarily on gaming. It's got some other stuff. It's very similar to Discord, so if you're a member, you can now go join our Gilded server. There will be a link in the description or on the website for members. Very excited about that as well. So those are the updates. Now we can get into the utter state of our country which we're less excited about, but such is life. So I want to start off by outlining how we got to this place. I put a video out two Thursdays ago in which I said basically that while we might understand why people decided to occupy the Capitol, it was ultimately stupid and it's going to come back to bite us. And then the next day, our president was effectively blacklisted from the internet because that event allowed them to occupy a legal gray area in which they could potentially argue that his rhetoric alone is inciting violence. And so what happened? People got angry. They wanted to make a statement. And when all is said and done, as we predicted we're gonna get our teeth kicked down our throats because to reiterate the point from that video, conservatives don't have enough power in society to get away with something like that. We all know that the left burned down DC the day that Trump was inaugurated. We all know about what they did this summer. We know about when the Kavanaugh protesters occupied the Capitol, but it doesn't even matter because they have the power. They control the narratives and resultantly, they can act with eternal impunity. And we're gonna talk exclusively about leftist hypocrisy in the video that comes out Thursday, but. The reason that I bring this up now is to illustrate what happens when you aren't disciplined. As a movement, as a person, it doesn't even matter. You have to have discipline. I understand the anger. I understand the examples that have been set by the left, but we can't be the ones to act on impulse like that. Look at where it got us. We made our little statement. We didn't actually accomplish anything, but we got some funny pictures. And now everyone is getting arrested by the feds. Our president has been kicked off the internet. Conservative censorship is getting cranked up well on its way to 11. And for what? For nothing. We didn't, we didn't show them who's boss. No, we got placed on the no-fly list. You think they didn't want you to do that? Of course they wanted you to do that. And you took the bait. You gave them the excuse they needed to convince the masses that Trump and his supporters are threats to the existence of the country. And now we're in basically the worst position that we've ever been in, which is okay. It was inevitable. But the lesson going forward is that you have to be disciplined. You have to be thinking long term. You can't expect a reversal of 80 years of trends leading to the collapse of this country within one administration. This is something that we'll be pushing back against for the rest of our lives. And you have to be comfortable in the knowledge that you will probably not live to see the results of your effort. But that your grandchildren, or maybe even your children if you're lucky, that they will is good enough for you, that in itself justifies your efforts. And the Trump presidency was a huge step forward in the right direction. In fact, the election of Donald Trump is a much larger step forward for the country than Joe Biden will be a step backwards for the country. And what's particularly good is that it's forcing us to realize how dire our situation actually is. It's forcing and necessitating a political and psychological evolution that has never been seen before in this country, let alone amongst conservatives. And right now we're in the very early stages of that because a lot of us really don't know what to do right now. We're not quite sure what to think because we've basically been conditioned to believe that the only evil is government. If we could only have small government, then we'd all be much better off. Big government sucks, all that rhetoric. And there's truth to that. 
But what even is government? Government is just power. Government means that if you don't listen to them, eventually someone will show up to your house with a gun. That's power. And the state has a monopoly on that type of coercion. But here's basically where this comes into conflict with conservatism, because as conservatives, we acknowledge human nature and we recognize that everyone is different. We all have different skills and levels of intelligence. We all have different interests, aptitude, whatever metric you'd like, we're all completely different. And because of that, you will inexorably have a hierarchy in society. Invariably, it's, it's unavoidable. You're always going to have power in society. And so the problem that we have as conservatives is that we've tried to minimize that power. We've tried to avoid that power and the consequences of it by pledging allegiance to these abstract ideas of private companies, make your own internet service provider, et cetera. But really what that comes down to is just pretending that the power doesn't exist and just hoping that it kind of goes away while feeling as though we're taking a victory because we've remained strong in our principles that require us to do nothing except wait to lose. So the point is that power is inevitable. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's only bad when bad people have that power, which is where we are right now. The same way that censorship isn't always bad. It's only bad when bad people do it. And the reflexive conservative response to this is, well, now who gets to decide who the good and bad guys are? You do. We do. Do you not know right from wrong? Do you not know what good and bad are? Because if, if that's the case, go do your homework. Take a break from this. Go figure that out. And we have to be very clear here. We're not talking about the thought police. We're not talking about arresting people for having the wrong opinions. You know, like they're going to do to us because they actually play for keeps. No, we are simply acknowledging that power is bad when it is used to do bad things. And censorship is bad when it is used to censor good things. And more specifically, things that seek to push back against those bad things. The example would basically be this. Right now, you have every media apparatus in the country pressuring the society to ostracize and punish people who support Donald Trump. Are we supposed to pretend that's actually free speech and if we punish them for their role in promoting the riots the lies that incited the riots that did billions of dollars worth of property damage throughout the summer are we going to pretend that's an attack on free speech the truth is that the left doesn't actually care about free speech and obviously we know that but even now you'll hear some conservatives say well the left used to support free speech what happened i'll tell you what happened you gave them a seat at the table you absolute doorknob why did you do that there was a time in this country, we had a social and a moral fabric, and that fabric was upheld by this little thing called the family unit, and leftist intellectuals, quote unquote, have long understood that if you can successfully dismantle the family unit, then you can dismantle and take over the society because there will be nothing to ground people, there will be no stability, etc. Karl Marx wrote about this, Herbert Marcuse wrote about this, uh, the authoritarian personality, which is something that we've talked about before on this channel, that touched on this. And so in order to preserve the social and moral fabric, which is necessary for a free and prosperous society, there were just certain things that you didn't discuss. It was considered unbecoming, rightfully so. And so the left essentially employed the idea of free speech as a political strategy throughout the latter half of the 20th century. Like, hey man, casual sex. Hey man, divorce. Hey man, pornography. Hey man, communism, atheism. Hey man, Satanism. Hey man, just live and let live. Free speech, man. It doesn't bother you. And the poor American man thought to himself, wow, now I suppose it is a part of freedom. It doesn't affect me. Now fast forward a couple decades. All those things just got just mortared into society. Doom. And then society's like, mommy, mommy, help. Give me your pee pee. Give me reparations. You're not even black. You're Samoan. Now look where we are. That same man, that same old stock American man, the poor naive bastard, he's probably now on his deathbed saying goodbye to his transgender grandchildren before his family has him euthanized. And he has learned that it actually does affect him because these people never cared about free speech. They cared about winning. Yeah, they cared about total domination of the United States of America and everything for which it stands. And how do you achieve that? You break through the barrier. You appeal to the idea of God-given rights by Trojan horsing your agenda under the guise of free speech. And then once you build up some power in society, you purge the opposition. And they're left scratching their heads like, but, but, but I thought you cared about free speech. They don't. They never did. They never will. So here's a thought experiment. If our God-given rights are protected by the Constitution, and if they will be infringed upon by the undermining of that Constitution, then is it not paradoxical to enable indoctrination masquerading as free speech that will result in that Constitution being thrown out within a few generations? And again, I'm not advocating for censorship of people who criticize America. I'm not saying that kids should be taught to pledge allegiance to the state. I'm simply saying there's a difference between pledging allegiance to the state and pledging allegiance to the flag. I will never pledge allegiance to the state because they're gay and they make me pay them to make my life more difficult, but I'll pledge allegiance to the flag because by pledging allegiance to the flag, you are symbolically pledging allegiance to what that flag used to stand for and showing respect for the men who died for this country back when, frankly, there was a more explicitly obvious reason to do so. And so the point is that criticizing the government, yeah, go crazy, yes. But that's not what's going on right now. 
What's going on is a mass marketed propaganda and indoctrination campaign that seeks to undermine everything that that flag used to stand for and that this country used to stand for. And so the question is basically, how long are we going to allow for that indoctrination to occur? For how much longer are we going to shill for the supposed free speech of those whose ultimate goal is to take all of our rights away entirely? Because we'll never take back the media. We'll never take back academia. That would take like two generations. We don't have that much time. We've got like maybe 15 years. And so the way I see it is that the only institution left that we could occupy would be the government. And luckily for us, that institution has the power and we need to actually use that power to push back against the left because otherwise we're done. And the counter argument to this is always, well, well, if, if you use the government to stop them from convincing millions of people to hate their country and to actively work to undermine it and harm those who love it, well, then who's to say that eventually the government might just decide that it wants to do that to you? What if that happens? And it's like, buddy, please, you need to wake up, okay? The government is already doing that. The government is using private corporations as an extension of its own agenda. It's all the same coalition and it's all against you. And so you basically have two options. You can sit back and watch as it gets worse for you and convince yourself that you're principled or whatever, or you can actually try to take back the only power in society that is still available to you for the time being because the window is closing and then use that power for good. And this is why I maintain that violence is a cope. Obviously, I condemn violence. I disavow all of that. But even aside from that, I regard it to basically be a cope because you've got all of these conservatives who are afraid to use the government to actually enact their agenda, to actually do something good, to actually protect and improve their country. But then they want to go and they want to go fantasize about executing politicians and, and overthrowing the government. Like, no, dude, you're just LARPing. You look like a clown. You're not going to overthrow the government. You want to feel as though you've got some power left in society. And so you're out there, you know, you're clinging to your guns and telling yourself one day, one day I'm going to put down the Mountain Dew. One day I'm going to go take the country back. I'm going to hop out of the lazy boy and I'm going to go make the founding fathers proud. No, no, that's stupid. That would get you absolutely nowhere. Violence is a cope. And if you think violence is the answer, you need to get control of your emotions. If you want to enact change in this country, you basically have to get really smart, get a lot of money, build a network and then get into a position of power and then enact change. That's how we win. If you want to go out there looking for trouble, you're going to get yourself killed or thrown in jail. So stop. That's exactly what they want you to do. Stay home. Stay away from these protests for a while. They are doing this as a display of force, and they would like nothing more than to make an example of you. So don't be an idiot. Be smart. Get into a position of power. Start advocating for guaranteed First Amendment rights on social media platforms. Oh, well, but John, that would come back to bite you. Yeah, that's a galaxy brain take, my friend. Guaranteeing my free speech in the new public square would eventually come back to bite me. Do you mean when I create my own Twitter.com, when I have my own ISP, then when I have to let people speak, I'm really just going to be going to be kicking myself. That's your hypothesis. Grow up. Do you know what happens when private companies try to prevent people from speaking in Russia or Poland? The companies get punished by the government. Oh, well, but they have big government just because I can't go over there and cyber bully Vladimir Putin. Riddle me this. What's the appeal of the freedom to cyber bully the president of the United States if private companies have effectively banned him from the internet? I can't quite square that. The left views speech as violence, and they also view absence of supporting speech as violence. Remember, silence is violence. In other words, you have to speak, and it has to align with their manufactured and mass-marketed narrative. And if you disagree, well, that's actually like violence. Because if you disagree with the message of Black Lives Matter, well, you're enabling police officers to murder black people. So you're actually complicit in violence, and so you have to be censored. They do this with every issue, and that's their justification for silencing you. And so things are probably going to get pretty bad for us pretty soon. Time will tell. We'll be here hopefully to to analyze all of it, but just keep in mind that God has a plan and he knows exactly how much you can handle. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 outlines this pretty clearly. I don't know the scripture off the top of my head, but it basically reads that God will not allow anything to happen to you beyond what he knows you can bear, beyond what your absolute limit is, and he will always provide to you a way out of that hardship, whatever that may be. So ultimately what that means is that it's on you, big guy, to push the rock up the hill. You are being tested, and if you fail, it's on you because society is run by agents of Satan who have engineered everything to make you as numb and pacified and depressed as possible, hoping that you lose hope, you lose faith, you turn to vices like drugs and pornography to fill that void, this is your test. It's your ultimate test. You can't lose hope. Buckle under the pressure because that's the only way that they win. As long as they don't break your spirit, they can never win. It's impossible. And if they thought otherwise, they wouldn't be trying so militantly to mentally destroy the society, to breed mental illness throughout the society. And I have a feeling that it's going to get worse in the next few years, but it's okay because we'll be here. You can stay in contact with the website. Worst comes to worse. We're going to get through this together. We're thinking about building some sort of like mentorship network because there aren't a whole lot of those on the right for people looking to have like a serious impact. We've got some ideas, but in the meantime, just remember, stay optimistic. Remember what your purpose is. I'll see some of you on Thursday in Arizona. Very epic. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, go over here, subscribe to the channel, run back over here, turn on post notifications, and then do as you will with this last one, which of course is share the video with a friend. The macro conflict is of course good versus evil. There's like kind of like a funnel of conflict. And so it starts like up here with like good versus evil, 
And then you get into like maybe, you know, right versus left establishment versus American people. But on the micro, like the, the absolute reduced fraction of the conflicts that I'm experiencing, it's my right hand versus the MAGA hat. I don't know what it was, but the placement this time was just not conducive to comfortable gesturing as I sort of explained things. Like, I don't even know. I can't emulate it now because I'm not like talking, but sometimes the hand goes here. Sometimes it goes like here. Yeah, this was just not conducive to, to what we wanted to do there. So, so be it. Such is life. So that's the thing. You know, we're talking about obstacles. You got to push the rock up the hill. For you guys, it's getting an education and a well-paying job and raising a family in a country that hates you. For me, where's the hand going to go if the hat's there? We got to make a symmetrical set, relatively well put together set. We all have our burdens. This is mine. This is my Leviathan. That's me. I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to tell you guys that you need to solve your problems. I'm going to figure this out. And I'm going to tell you that you have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. I'm going to get an email from somebody like, John, the factory t closed in my town because of Jeff Bezos. My family can't eat. I'm only in high school. What should I do? And I'm going to be like, look, bud. I'm working real hard. I'm putting in hours right now. I'm working round the clock trying to figure out this hat placement issue, frankly. And I, I'm going to take the time to answer his email in so much length, like superfluous length. A shorter length could have been used to answer his actual question, but I'm just going to write a total novel making him feel bad for daring to inquire as to my prescription for his problem, given what he knows about the hat dilemma, the hat crisis of 21. What if it just went over here? I don't know. Maybe because we're going to have a new set anyways pretty soon. Okay. First of all, two minute outros are based in red pilled. I don't even want to hear any, any anti two minute outro rhetoric. We'll figure it out. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.